as state reps debated legislation to ban what they call stratospheric aerosol injection. There was no mention of the word chemtrails. Conspiracy theories, conspiracy theories. They're what define our news cycle. I wonder how many conspiracy theories will make their way into mainstream thought simply because of responsible reporting in independent media. I mean, how do you guys feel about, for example, chemtrails? Do you feel that chemtrails are a real thing or are they for the tin pot wearing crack pots out there on the periphery? How do you feel when you see those stories discussed? And how do you feel when legacy media appear to be going out of their way simply to avoid using the term chemtrail? And its staters are concerned about issues like housing and the high cost of living. But the New Hampshire House took a bit of a detour last week as state reps debated legislation to ban what they call stratospheric aerosol injection. Gotta do something about chemtrails. No, no, not chemtrails. Chemtrails is a conspiracy theory and there's definitely no such thing as chemtrails. The sky, there's no weather experiments. There's no weird flash floods in the Middle East. None of that's happening. You don't look up to the sky and see it curiously scarred. There's not the advent of curious new conditions in childhood that appear to be as a result of the presence of heavy metals. Chemical chemtrails is made up. But when it comes to aerosol, ambient air, atmospheric aerosols, or whatever we're calling it this week, we better do something about it. In House Bill 1700, but lawmakers brought it up on their own on the House floor. This is the conspiracy theory that condensation trails left by aircraft in the sky are not frozen water vapor, but actually attempts to control the weather or somehow poison populations on the ground. It's been widely and repeatedly debunked by the scientific community. Often you hear these ideas being debunked, but I think it's always worth considering that the objectivity that's referred to in science and the empiricism that's referred to in science has a curious little catch. Who's going to pay for the trials to prove that, for example, certain medications are not effective if those medications are profitable? Haven't we just learned that possibly would have been effective ways of treating COVID. And indeed, that message was curtailed because vaccines wouldn't be able to be aggressively issued and near mandated if alternative medicines were available. Who's going to pay for chemtrail research? Is it going to be the government? Is it going to be universities that receive money from the kind of interests that are likely involved? You, before you arrive at the conclusion that it's been scientifically debunked, look at what undergirds that science. That's not saying that chemtrails are a real thing. They're saying remain circumspect and even sceptical until you've scrutinized the conditions that underwrite their apparent objectivity. But that wasn't what reps told the public when they took to the House floor last week. I'm not going to speak on what's currently going on in our atmosphere. Always, oh, he's, he's talking about chemtrails. Oh, that's, that's a complete conspiracy. That's not going on. That's never happened. Fine. Let's, let's, let's say it hasn't. I have here in my hands federal guidelines, a federal fr framework plan to implement such measures. Who's that geezer turned up in a mask in 2024? How old is this footage? This better have been from 2019 when we're all still worried that it had come from a wet market. Do you remember for like a couple of months last year, it was like, all over the news. Extraterrestrials are real now. Here are some military pilots to tell you that they've seen extraterrestrials. And aliens. That went on for ages, didn't it? And that just stopped again. But remember, for a couple of months, aliens were real. Now, what's this? Chemtrails are real. I, mean, I don't under. I will not claim to understand this. What I will say is that frequently ideas from the periphery make their way into the mainstream. I didn't imagine that we would see serious discussion of extraterrestrials, but we did, didn't we? Do you remember that? There were hearings. There were hearings. People were coming up, and sitting behind panel desks in Congress. But I think someone nearly had a fist fight on the subject. Weather weaponry is not a novel technology or some far-fetched theory. The theory of and the patents for weather manipulation go back over 100 years. Quote, weather was a weapon in Vietnam. Do you expect them to discontinue this? These trails in the sky that last for the entire day and dissipate to become blanket cloud coverage of our sky are not condensation trails. 
And one of the more interesting aspects of this bill is that it would require county sheriffs to participate in the investigation of any public complaints brought forward regarding chemtrails. No word on how deputies would patrol or surveil the open skies over the Granite State. Man, extraterrestrials, bloody extraterrestrials, chemtrails. Next, you'll be telling me that Alex Jones was right and that frogs were being turned gay by stuff in the water. Why is this guy so bad? And then they're going to realize, oh, he's so bad because he's telling me things I kind of suspected were true. I mean, I was doing an interview yesterday with Bobby Kennedy, a really an amazing interview. And right in the middle of it, he's like, you know, atrazine, you know, it can it can change the sex of frogs. And I he was on a roll, so I didn't want to interrupt him. I was like, I think Alex Jones made that point like 15 years ago and was mocked. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. And now it's just the science? Yeah, Alex. They were not making frogs gay. They were making frogs trans. Get a grip! You were described as a lunatic, like a mental patient needing like full-time care because you were such a danger to yourself and society when you said that. Turning the frogs gay. And now it's just like, well, that's just the science. That's the science. It's the science. You know, and when is someone going to call Alex Jones and be like, hey, Alex Jones, um, you were right about the frogs. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're too kind, but uh, you're already very it's successful. <laughs> you should sue them. I hear there's a lot of money in that game. Well, there you have it. Conspiracy theories making their way to conspiracy fact, whether it's chemtrails being discussed seriously, extraterrestrials all over the news for a couple of months before disappearing again, and now the impact of hormones and other chemicals in the water supply. In a sense, it isn't ridiculous at all, is it, to comp contemplate the impact of chemicals in various uh, synergetic human resources, the breath and air, the air that we breathe, excuse me, the water that we drink. Isn't it just common sense that there is a unitative, unitive interconnection beneath all apparent separation that we're tainting and polluting one another with negative words and dark, toxic chemicals? Oughtn't we therefore bring government to the most local level possible? If you were governed your own rivers and your own fields and your own skies, would you be willing to take the short end money that allowed big corporations to dump in those rivers to fill those skies with toxins? Of course you wouldn't. An inherent connection to the land, a connection to yourself and the right to govern your own community are, well, if there's such a thing as human rights, perhaps derived from our divinity, those would be but a few of them. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and the chat. Remember, like and subscribe wherever you're watching this and consider becoming an awakened wonder like Jack Swiss and E-Vibes and Marky B95 because then you can attend live events, study the Bible, join me for Russell Brand Stand Up Breakdown. It's worth it. It's worth being part of something beautiful, whole and powerful together. We can't continue to bring you this beautiful content without the support of our partners. What do you like? What do you want? These are these are actually snacks that are available from Rumble. Rumble make these uh, snacks. You see, this is a brand called Positive. It's a pet food brand that Rumble uh, have, but also they have a pet insurance that is an affiliate to it. You know, like um, dogs can go from very high energy to being sick in an instant. And you know, it's like if you have to call a vet, like when they're out of hours, it's a terrible way to manage your dog's health. Not to mention, it can be very stressful for you. So there's this emergency pet kit that you can get from Positive Health, which contains critical medications and supplies that can keep you out of vets and maybe even save your dog's life. So if you want want to use it, go to Positive, that's spelled like P-A-W, Positive.com slash brand. That's Positive, P-A-W-S, itive.com slash brand and get your pet emergency kit that's got critical meds in it like activated charcoal and styptic powder and you can get 15% off using the code brand today. Go to Positive.com slash brand and use the code brand to get 15% off. I like these... Um, Rumble connected organizations because they've been so supportive. Good boy. So supportive to our channel. It's great to uh, give a little bit back. There it is. Hey.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.